Radha Krishna Foundation presents Samarpa, an offering of service. Vrindavan Bihari Lali Ki Jai Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Deva Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Sad Guru Maharaj Ki Jai Sri Ganesha Yanama Sri Saraswataya Nama Dung Durga Om Namah Shivaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Kshama Karotum Mere Prabhu Ji Ab Tak Ke Saare Apura Shama Kado Tum Mere Prabhu Ji Ab Tak Ke Saare Apura Shama Karo Tum Mere Prabhu Ji Ab Tak Ke Saare Apura Dho Dalo Tan Ki Chadar Kho Dho Dalo Tan Ki Chadar Kho Lagge Hai Us Mein Jo Bhi Da क्षमा करो तुम मेरे प्रभु जी अब तक के सारे अपराध क्षमा करो क्षमा करो क्षमा करो क्षमा करो क्षमा करो Shanti Rupe Nasam Sita Namastasya 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 Namo Nama Bhagwan, also in his feminine form is Durga, Yadevi Sarvabhute Shukshanti Rupe and we pray to the Universal Mother for Kshanti, for forgiveness, not Shanti, Shanti speech, Kshanti, forgiveness. This is a very popular prayer by Hindus or human beings to God, we pray for forgiveness. Why? Because it's the most popular and desired quality of human beings by God. This quality of forgiveness is very popular amongst all of us because forgiveness is something that we, that we as humans or as human beings, we petition. We go to God and we petition for, for forgiveness if we think we have done something wrong. But many of us have many questions. Why? Because if we were to have a sense that we are indeed forgiven, 
then we'll have the feeling that we can walk away or walk away free of the weight of any wrongdoing that we may have done. We may even relax feeling that there will be no penalties for any of our previous actions if God would have forgiven us. However, if our perception of forgiveness is that we bestow this act of, of forgiveness upon another, another human being, knowing very well that we are granting utter escape to a person who has unnecessarily hurt us and even left us with all kinds of scars, mental and emotional scars, we may be hesitant to forgive. However, we go to God and we ask for forgiveness. But if someone has done something to us, we're not readily or very willing or most willing to usher that kind of forgiveness because we think that this is setting them free. So knowing this, let's, we have to ask ourselves the question, could this be a contributing factor in our hesitance to forgive someone? Is this even something that is recommended by the scriptures? Because after all, we will be setting someone free of their wrongdoings towards us. Someone who has hurt us and left us with, like I said, so many scars. So there's a reason for this sort of logic. It is perceived to be unfair normally because the forgiveness that we seek from God and the one that we think we are capable of granting to someone else, we're not very clear that they are distinctly different from each other. So the question crops up, how is this possible? So this refers us back to the law of karma. So it's very simple. We as human beings do not have the power to undo someone else's past karma. We do not have the power to undo the repercussions or the penalties of actions performed by, by any particular person. But yet it is recommended for us to forgive a person. Why? Because karma is a very logical thing as we can agree. It is also largely scientific. But we know or we should know that we, we cannot cause this uh, negative reaction of their, of their actions to be undone. So if it is not something that we can do for others, why is it that it is recommended for us to forgive others? So to get the answer to this question, we have to come to the understanding that forgiveness is not about letting someone who hurt us walk free and absolve them of all their wrongdoings. Rather, it is about letting ourselves walk free. This is an important point that we have to remember. Because forgiveness is not doing something or doing somebody else a favor. It is doing us a favor. What? The question will, how can that be? We're not the wrongdoer. How is this the case? And is this even recommended in the scriptures? <laughs> that a man of knowledge is a man who forgives. And a person who forgives, according to Bhagavad Gita, is a man of knowledge. So let's look at a scenario. In the case of us not being forgiving, should we decide not to forgive? There's a beautiful verse in Mahabharata that helps us to understand this. Abhishakto hyabhisheje 
ಅಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾನ್ ಪಾರ್ವ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ವರ್ಷ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಸರ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಇಫ್ ದ ಇಂಜರ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವರ್ ಟು ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ದ ಇಂಜುರಿ ಇಫ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿಲಿಫೈಡ್ ಬೈ ಅನದರ್ ವಿಲಿಫೈಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಇಫ್ ಫಾದರ್ಸ್ ಸೆಟಲ್ ಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಯರ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಫಾದರ್ಸ್ If husbands destroy their wives and wives destroy their husbands how can birth according to this verse in Mahabharat how can birth take place in such a place in the world because the only thing that is predominant in that place is destruction of all creatures this is when we are not forgiving hearing the wisdom of the scriptures i'm sure that the question crops up why should you be the one putting in the work meaning exercising forgiveness when someone else has done something wrong to you so it's about perspective we have to realize that this doesn't cost us anything rather it benefits us when we forgive how because the mere act of forgiveness takes place in the mind forgiveness is not a decision we make not an emotion we feel rather not an emotion we feel but a decision that we that that we make because we are always free to choose our emotions and we have the ability to control what we feel so we must not and should not relinquish that power to others the power to what causes how we feel giving that into the hands of someone else that they have now caused us to feel a particular way this is in our hands a good example is the holocaust survivor viktor frankl and there's an austrian jew that was practicing uh neurology and he was also a psychiatrist you know he was rounded up with his family and thrown into the auschwitz prison which is known as the worst of the jewish uh, concentration camps And so there he was separated from his wife, separated from his daughter. And later he got to find out that 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 they were killed. He himself, Viktor Frankl, went through tremendous suffering. But he survived and in his memoir he says that he did not have any control over the external situation. But he possesses something that no one can take away from him, the freedom to choose his feelings. irrespective of the circumstances victor is saying he says that life often serves you misery but one choice that you always have is how you respond to it that is not in anybody else's hand and so this response that frankl is talking about can be forgiveness and forgiveness will unleash the unstoppable cascade of peace in in your life regardless of what the external situations or your past experiences would be So here we can see that forgiveness cannot change what happened in the past but it can certainly enhance the future it can enlarge the future it can it can make us feel better because this is a choice that is in our hands to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover afterwards that the prisoner was you Lewis Smith So the question here arises if forgiveness is so valuable and costs nothing then why don't we all exercise it more often Someone may have done us wrong and they have moved on while we keep the resentment within us and we end up we end up suffering but the fact remains that harboring hurt only serves to hurt us further because the person who has done that has moved on we see it in anger and often the rage we nurture hurts us emotionally and psychologically and if what you think is that the offender may not even give a second thought as to what he or she has done and sleeps very well at night while we toss and turn while we are sweating bullets as to you know what has caused this why has this happened we imagine revenge we need to retaliate if we don't do these things we may not feel better about ourselves 
We cannot fix ourselves by breaking down someone else. That would be comparable to creating war if you're desirous of peace. So there's an old saying that says that when you try to give someone a piece of your mind, what ends up happening is that you lose your peace of mind. And it can get worse also. Because of the rage and the revenge that we're harboring, we end up hurting someone else, a person who is innocent in the process. Someone has done something to us once, but we're reliving this every day on a daily basis, and then in turn, we're hurting other people. Is this something wise? Then why do we do this? We do that because we have labeled ourselves as victims. We like to enslave ourselves to rage because we feel that, that we've been treated unfairly. But this is not us talking, this is our ego talking, not our logical mind, not our thinking power, but our ego. That we've been treated unfairly, so we should do something about it. This only serves to generate anxiety, anger, and depression. Worse yet, it compromises our peace of mind. We become bound by negative emotions and, res and resentment. So what we have to do, we have to practice forgiveness in the right way. Because forgiveness is what will set us free from such negativity. Forgiveness allows us to sleep better at night. Forgiveness is about relinquishing the past and looking to the future. Forgiveness is a gift that we bestow upon ourselves. It is not a favor to someone, forgiveness. It's not a favor to, to someone else. Rather, it is the greatest favor you can give to your own self. There's another study published in 2011 in the Journal of Personal Relationship that says that when a victim in a relationship forgives the other one, both experience a decrease in blood pressure. It also predicts positive psychological functioning. So these are all the benefits of, of forgiveness from a, from a practical and a scientific standpoint. Do our scriptures support these these findings, let's find out. <laughs> chapter 48 verse forgiveness is the energy of the energetic forgiveness is the truth of the truthful forgive forgiving persons attain to the regions of those of ascetics ascetics meaning yogis and those well versed with the knowledge of brahman meaning those who have studied tattva gyan people who are of a forgiving nature are in the same category in terms of what they can achieve in life. 
with these very high level souls. Forgiveness is a fragrance that a violet sheds and heals that has crushed it. Mark Twain. So this is where we say, yes, I understand that. But I don't forgive because I've been betrayed. Have we ever thought that God is often betrayed by us? Yet, we are asking of Bhagwan to forgive us. Because we know that in many cases we, we can experience His grace. And there are examples for us to follow in the scriptures as to how God is forgiving, unconditionally as well. Bhishma Pitamaha, the grandchild in Mahabharata, wanted to see Sri Krishna when he was lying on a bed of arrows. Even though he was fighting on the side of the Kauravas, on the side of unrighteousness against Sri Krishna. When he was dying, he asked to see him, and Bhagavan Krishna granted it, that, that to him. This is a forgiving nature of God, Sri Ram. Even though Ravan abducted Mata Sita, when he got to the southern side of India, he sent Hanumanji to Lanka to extend a hand of friendship to Ravan, to tell him that if you release Mata Sita and she comes back safely to us, that we can call this a day. Send a message of forgiveness to him again. God is so forgiving. Why can't we take those same examples that we know from the scripture and be like that ourselves? Bhagavan here is leading from the front on the, on, the, on the road of forgiveness. He demonstrates practically and recommends scripturally that we should be forgiving. Because failing to do so is falling short of our true potential. We have this potential of forgiveness within us. But we keep scores, you know, keeping score of all scores and scars, getting even and one-upping always makes you less than you are. Robert Frost. So there's a challenge for us. In order to develop a good habit, it helps if we understand the benefits of that habit, right? That's fair to say. So let's see again if science will be able to help us. A 2011 study in the Society of Behavioral Medicine presented a paper, presented a study that says that forgiveness creates a better immune system. In this study, the results support the hypothesis that it makes relationships stronger. That transformational forgiveness reduces the risk of alcohol and substance abuse. These are all scientific studies because often substance abuse is a mask for underlying pain. Even physical pain often has a psychological cause. And they can be reversed, not by medication, but through forgiveness. And further, that it helps us, the study says, to find the gifts in our everyday situations instead. Instead of finding something to hate, we find something to love. Now, we have scriptural and scientific evidence about the benefits of forgiveness. We've gone through a few. So charged with this information, let us act as persons of knowledge. Remember the verse? And let us bestow forgiveness on others. And hence, free ourselves. Because far, for far too long, we've locked away every ounce of forgiveness we, we're capable of. We feel that we have to wait to bestow our precious forgiveness upon a very worthy person. And then in the end, we sadly realize that each person we encounter is unworthy of our forgiveness. We've never done it. But we have to remember that forgiveness is not about others or finding someone worthy of bestowing forgiveness upon. It's about us. It's about you. Are you worthy is what the question. Am I worthy? of my own forgiveness is what the question is. Because we have to realize that forgiveness is the only weapon to destroy the enmity living in our heads. All the enemies and all the enmity that we, that we nurture, the only weapon that will get rid of is forgiveness. And that forgiveness only has value. This is important. It only has value when it is given away. So let's close with a few slokas from the, from, from, 
from the scriptures. Here's a, a beautiful slok, and this is not this is sung by Kashyap Muni. Kashyap Muni is one of the Saptarishis, the seven sages. This is what he says about forgiveness. Shama Dharma Shama Yagya Shama Veda here saying to encourage us to be forgiving that forgiveness is your dharma it is a great virtue kshama yagya forgiveness is yagya means when we perform a yagya forgiveness is like a yagya it's a sacrifice kshama veda veda means our scriptures the vedas kshama shruti means the same thing shruti means ved forgiveness is the ved he who knows this forgives everyone kshama brahma kshama satyam the forgiveness is brahma the creator kshama satyam if we want to be truthful a good place to start is with forgiveness forgiveness is truth kshama bhutam cha bhavicha forgiveness is the future protection of any person kshama tapaha forgiveness is the highest penance and kshama saucham forgiveness is purity so forgive those who have done you wrong and release the burden of rage and anger from within yourself forgive yourself for forgiveness is about finally setting yourself free and walking into a better and a more exciting future that has always been waiting for you or for us it's about becoming a better person that we are always capable of becoming forgive now and enter that new phase of your life relinquishing the past and embracing the future if you care for forgiveness or if you care for yourself rather you will care to forgive brindavan bihari lal ki jai bar bar bar